All right, in this video, I'm gonna be repairing this 13 inch mid 2012 Apple MacBook Pro. Now, I actually had this machine sent in to me by somebody uh, to repair it. And uh, this machine has seen a very, very hard life, it appears. Um, so basically, the, in essence, it boils down to whoever worked on this previously to me had literally no idea what the heck they were doing. And uh, let's just take a look at it real fast. Uh, first sign here, um, somebody obviously put screws in here that were way too long and have ruined this uh, aluminum around the power button here. Um, so that's quite unfortunate. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look inside the machine, um, we'll see a lot more that's wrong in here. Um, so when I initially got this, uh, the person who sent it to me said a few connectors were ripped off the board. Um, namely, it was this connector, um, this connector for the uh, subwoofer and speaker on this side of the system. Um, and then this one, of course, is for the fan, as you can see. Um, and I found after taking the board out there, there was also another connector ripped off uh, for the speaker on this side of the board, which plugs in on the other side. So yeah, whoever owned this machine before me or whoever worked on it before me, I don't know if, if uh, the person who actually owns the machine is the one who worked on it, but they did a pretty terrible job. So uh, the LVDS connector... It looks like it works. It looks pretty good, but uh, it may or may not be good. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if we go ahead and unplug it here, you can see that uh, the little plastic piece on the connector is ripped away a little bit. I don't know if you can really see that. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Now there's uh, some floating pins right there. Yeah. So you can see the plastic's ripped off a little bit right there. I'm not sure if that's a huge deal or not. I don't think it is. Um, but, um, yeah, so if we take a look at this side, uh, whoever tried to put this Wi-Fi card in obviously did not have any idea what the heck they were doing. Uh, the screws are in there, but they're not even screwed into anything. So I don't know what the heck is going on here. And this hard drive cable is probably destroyed. It looks all kinked up and ruined. Um, I did test it in the... Uh, a little LED on the front here doesn't even come on when it's plugged in, so that's probably bad. Um, and then the last thing uh, that's messed up in this machine is the lower RAM slot does not work uh, whatsoever. If there's a module in that slot, uh, the system just beeps three times and will boot. Um, but as I said, the machine actually does turn on, uh, but the issue is uh, that the display uh, has an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, and uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so now with the uh, LCD plugged back in, we can go ahead and plug the system in and turn it on. All right, so it looks like it's working just fine, uh, but the first thing you're gonna notice here is the backlight. Now, this is actually not an issue uh, that we're gonna be fixing because this is actually uh, an issue with the uh, LCD panel itself, which uh, of course can only be solved by replacing it, which um, I'm not going to do unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, but the issue is that the LCD does not actually show an image whatsoever. It just sits on a white screen and uh, nothing is shown at all. Now if we go ahead and take a look uh, from an angle here, you can kind of see uh, some of these lines that have started to form on the display here. You can see some more over here. And um, this is actually indicative of a logic board problem. Now, just in case, I did try a different screen on this machine, and uh, it produced the exact same results, of course, without uh, this backlight issue you see here, but it still did not show an image and only showed uh, these lines here. And you can see the screen starting to flicker when I move the machine, so um, the uh, connector might be bad as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Um, what I do know is that there is actually something wrong with the logic board, and usually uh, this problem is pretty easy to fix. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the board out and we'll go ahead and proceed with the process of figuring out what's wrong with the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it and I'll resume the video once I'm done. All right, so as you can see, I've now gotten the uh, board out of the machine here and I have started and I've done a little bit of testing on the board and I believe I have already found the issue. So if we take a look at the schematic here, um, go to the uh, LVDS connector right here. And we'll take a look at its main power rail right here. So that is PP3V3LCDVDDSW. And uh, 
This goes through this coil or this inductor, L9004, and then it goes, uh, hits a capacitor right here to ground, but uh, then it goes straight into the LVDS connector there. Now, with the machine on, I measured on both sides of this inductor, and we are getting 3.3 volts like we're supposed to get, as it says right here, um, on this side of the inductor. However, on this side, we are getting like 1.7 volts. So uh, that is definitely the problem. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's the problem. Um, so that com that uh, component L9004 is uh, located right here on the board. And if we go ahead and look at that that inductor on the board, you can see that it looks pretty darn bad. So uh, there it is right here, right there, that little black component right there that I'm grabbing with the tweezers. And uh, you can see that it looks pretty much destroyed there. So uh, that's definitely burnt up. Um, hopefully it didn't take any traces with it. I don't think it did. It looks like uh, it's uh, fine, but just a little bit burnt up. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just desolder that and uh, replace that with one from a different board. So I'm gonna go ahead and resume the video and begin the process of replacing that inductor. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've now gotten the board uh, ready to begin soldering. So uh, I do like to use uh, the board preheater uh, when I'm using, when I'm desoldering uh, components that are this close to a sensitive plastic connector like that. Um, so I've got it on top of it right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is of course apply some flux around the area we'll be soldering, which is right there. And um, then I'll go ahead and turn on the board preheater. All right, so we'll just go ahead and wait for that to warm up a little bit here. Um, and then once it does, we'll go ahead and use my hot air gun to heat up the, the uh, inductor and remove it from this board. And by the way, this is a, um, a different board from the one I had originally because uh, I'm of course using this to get the inductor off of and then we're going to solder it back on uh, to the board we're repairing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my hot air here and begin desoldering the inductor. Trying to turn down the air a little bit. All right, so there we go. The inductor came right off pretty easily there. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the other board back up here and we'll go ahead and solder this inductor on it. So I'll go ahead and get that board and I'll resume the video. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the other board back up here. Um, so now we'll go ahead and apply some flux to the same area. Go ahead and heat up the board. And uh, then once it heats up, we'll just take that inductor off and put the other one back on. Alright, so as you can see, I did remove the inductor there, however, it did appear to have uh, pulled up a trace. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, probably run a little bit of a jumper wire here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my soldering iron and uh, go ahead and try to rejuvenate that pad and uh, see if I can make it come back. So uh, I'm warming up my soldering iron here.
All right, so it looks like that pad actually did come back. Um, so now we should be able to just heat up the, uh, the area and solder the new inductor onto the board. Um, so let me go ahead and get my hot air out once again. And then we'll begin soldering the new inductor onto the board. Alright, so that has been soldered on it looks like, so I'll go ahead and turn off my hot air here, and uh, yeah, so that looks pretty good. So yeah, now we'll go ahead and plug the screen in, test it once again, and see if that actually fixed the issue. So I'll go ahead and hook it up and resume the video once we are ready to test it. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the machine uh, put in its chassis, uh, just enough so we can give it a quick test. Um, so I'll go ahead and plug it in, and we'll see what happens. And the screen is now on, and there are no more vertical lines. Now, of course, the backlight issue is still there because that's a problem with the screen, like I said a couple times before. Uh, but let's see if we get a flashing question mark. And there it is. The display is now working. That bad inductor was indeed the problem. And uh, now the board is working perfectly fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and fully reassemble the machine. And we'll hook up a hard drive to it boot it and test it and see if it uh, fully works when it's booted into an operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it and resume the video once I'm ready to fully test it. Alright, so I've gotten the machine fully reassembled and I actually did plug a uh, hard disk into this uh, that mangled up hard drive cable that's in here. So I'll go ahead and see if that works. I'm not, I'm not too hopeful about that, but uh, hopefully it will. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. All right, so I do need to remove that lower memory module. All right, so it actually turned out that it was the top memory slot that was bad. Um, that is actually quite unusual. I've never seen that happen before. Uh, but it turns out the bottom memory slot is working just fine. So basically, if there is a module in the top slot, uh, the system will either beep three times when starting up, as it just did uh, in the previous clip, or when you tap on the memory module while the machine's running, it either shuts off or restarts, and that indicates a bad slot, of course. Um, I did the same testing for the bottom slot, and it did not it, it did not exhibit the same behavior. So uh, I think the bottom slot is actually good on this machine, and it is the top slot that failed. So with that, I'll go ahead and plug it in again, and I'll go ahead and see if it detects that hard drive uh, that I hooked up to that cable. All right, so the display is on here, as you can see. And uh, the display is on, so we'll go ahead and boot from that drive. And it did actually detect the drive, so uh, that's pretty cool. So let's see if it can successfully boot from it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let the machine boot up, and uh, then I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, the machine has successfully booted up. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the specs here. So yeah, you can see this is a 13-inch mid-2012 model. Uh, it's the base model with the 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core i5, uh, just 2 gigs of RAM because that's all I had to put in it, and it's got Intel HD Graphics 4000. So that has been the repair of this 13-inch mid-2012 Apple MacBook Pro. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video.